This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Monday, November 23. So glad you could join us. The Caribbean must fast-track efforts to build resilience in the face of climate change. That's among key findings in the State of the Caribbean Climate Report, which was launched online today by Professor Michael Taylor, Dean of the Faculty of Science and Technology at the UWI Mona Campus. The report warns climate change has been changed in the lives of Caribbean people, and it will continue to do so. This report supports the Caribbean message, climate message. Our climate is already changing. But it also supports the Caribbean climate message that our climate will continue to change. And so it draws upon the, the information available, available from global climate models, but more importantly, regional climate models that allow us to look on the Caribbean specifically, and statistical downscaling, which looks on stations within countries. And it makes the strong case for multiple variables temperature, rainfall, for looking on hurricanes, looking on sea level rise, that our climate will continue to change. If we will be, we're, we're on a track for a hotter regime. We're on a track for continued variability in rainfall, but, but around a lower mean, so a drier future, higher sea levels, and more intense hurricanes. This chapter, presents all this, this kind of picture for the Caribbean, and it does so for three time frames: the 2020s for immediate planning, the 2050s for midterm planning. The report was prepared by the UWI, the Caribbean Meteorology and Hydrology Institute, and the Cuban Institute of Meteorology. It was funded by the European Union and the Caribbean Development Bank. CDB President Dr. Warren Smith stressed that tackling climate change must remain a priority. Early investment can reduce economic damage and loss of lives to disasters. Therefore, Caribbean countries must take early action and receive the full support of the development agencies in planning, in implementing safeguard measures, and investing in the appropriate climate resilient infrastructure. Second, climate change adaptation and mitigation are more effective when they are fully integrated into a comprehensive and sustainable development framework. Police are continuing investigations into an accident that occurred at the bottom of University Hill this afternoon. Two women were injured after the vehicle ran off the road by the Frank Rowell roundabout. Barbados today understands that one of the women is reportedly in her 80s. COVID-19 cases in Barbados reached 260. A 24-year-old man is the latest person to be diagnosed with a viral illness. He arrived from Jamaica on a Caribbean Airlines flight on November 14 and returned a positive result after undergoing a second test two days later. He was asymptomatic but was isolated and under investigation at Harrison Point St. Lucie since November 17. He is one of 12 people in isolation. No one was released today. Of the 260 confirmed cases, there are 136 females and 124 males. There were 241 recoveries and seven deaths. To date, the laboratory has completed 44,868 tests. There's regional and international news after this short break. In Guyana, Home Affairs Minister Robinson Ben is determined to clean up the country's police force amid strong complaints about the conduct of officers. He's urging citizens to record their engagements with police. We have issues of poor parking. We have issues of um, very poor engagement with many of the police or some of the police with the traveling public. We have the ongoing criticisms of bribery on the road. We have the situation where people are attacking and fighting the policemen. 
even the traffic police, men and women. We like this to stop. I want to appeal for both of those issues to be brought under control. The issues of corruption besmirch the entire police force and the traffic department. And we have to get on top of this issue. I've asked and I want that every person who engages with the police on the road to make an audio or video taping of that engagement. And if there's a problem, to bring it to the attention of the ministry. That's what I want. I want also in the police stations to have audio and video, video recording of the engagement between the public and the police. On the international front, a coronavirus vaccine developed by drug firm AstraZeneca and Oxford University has shown 70% effectiveness in trials involving 23,000 people, they said in a statement today. The announcement comes after another drug trial developed by Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna announced effectiveness above 90%. After months of painstaking research, a vaccine the UK has pinned its hopes on has finally yielded results. According to the team from Oxford University and drug firm AstraZeneca, clinical trials showed that 70% of participants were protected, a step forward in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. It's vital that the independent regulator, the MHRA, uh, will need to look at the data, but we've got 100 million doses uh, on order. Uh, and um, should all that go well, the bulk of the rollout will be in the, in the new year. Scientists arrived at the figure of 70% by averaging out the results from two different dosages. Protection fell to 62% when two full doses were taken a month apart. But that figure shot up to 90% when a half dose was followed by a full dose a month later, meaning the vaccine's effectiveness could rise if scientists can perfect the dose. The results come off the back of clinical trials from US drug giant Pfizer and another one from Moderna, both showing up to 95% protection. But although the Oxford jab falls short of that figure, it's far cheaper to produce and easier to transport and store. Uh, it's a vaccine that can be stored at fridge temperature for longer periods. It's a vaccine that has high effectiveness in one of the dosage regimes that have been tried out. The vaccine now has to be approved by regulators before it can be rolled out in the coming weeks. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.